Welcome to Caterpillar's Tanaha Hills Training Center, paving demonstration area. My name is Dave King, and this is my good friend Todd Mansell. On behalf of the entire CAT paving team, we'd like to once again extend our gratitude for the time that you've taken to be here with us in Tucson. Todd and I are going to walk you through a demonstration of our products and services using stories that we've heard from you on your job sites, visits to the factory, and just overall our interactions with you around the world. In this particular uh, demonstration, Todd's going to play the role of general superintendent. Todd, tell us a little bit about the job site, if you would. Hey, Dave, before we get started, what do we got a service truck sitting out here on our job site for? Todd, great question. Guys called me last night as we were cl getting cleaned up, and uh, they nicked a cable. So I called the cat dealer at 7 p.m. last night, and they promised they'd have us back up and running before we got started this morning. It's really hard to beat the level of service these guys give us. They're genuinely concerned about our success. You know, when my dad first started this company, he wasn't sure if we could afford to buy a cat. Now, he doesn't know how we can afford not to buy a cat. From the experience of buying our first cat machine, the upfront financing when we were a nobody, to the unparalleled service they provide, they truly are a big part of our success and growth. I couldn't agree more, Todd. It's like we're their only customer. So tell us a little bit more about the job set. Sure, Dave. I'd like to take you on a virtual tour of our Interstate 19 reconstruction project and share with you some of the equipment and technology that's helping us succeed the quality specs, and safely complete this project on time and under budget. Now, let's do the work. This reconstruction project involves milling five lane miles of existing asphalt to a depth of two inches and overlaying it with a new asphalt surface. In addition, one interchange will be partially reconstructed and some new drainage and lighting features will be added. We subbed out the utility work on this project to Ditch Diggers, one of our business partners. We're gonna start with the PM825, currently the largest in Cat's family of five halfway in mills. I say currently, but they tell me to stay tuned. The guys are putting this thing to work and we're gonna mill out some asphalt. So we started this project by removing a minimum of two inches off the surface of the existing pavement using a PM825 at eight feet wide to improve the cross fall to 2% on the straightaways and improve the longitudinal profile so we can maximize our bonus pay for smoothness. To achieve an accurate profile, the PM825 is using a 3D grade control system with a CAT K-series high production rotor running kind of metal bits. Jim has already moved the 825 into position using 3D grade control. The 3D design that was uploaded on the machine guided the rotor transition from zero to two inches over 20 feet, creating the smooth taper that you see for maintaining traffic. The built-in CAT grade control system has advanced features like programming, ramp in or ramp out, even if we're not using the 3D package. With a couple of quick button pushes, we can taper into or out of any depth of cut over any length we decide. The guys really love that feature. It takes all the guesswork right out of it. No doubt about it. Great point, Dave. The 3D grade control system is also cutting a consistent 2% crossfall based off the plan file that was created in the office and loaded on the machine. Accurate grade control will set us up for maximum smoothness bonus when Ron and Steve come in to pave with the AP 1055. For now, all the reclaimed asphalt, or wrap, will be taken back to the plant and recycled into hot mix. Did you know that asphalt is America's most recycled product? In 2017, over 76 million tons of asphalt were recycled and put back into our roads. That doesn't include other recycled products, such as asphalt shingles, foundry slag, and other materials saving an additional 56 million cubic yards of landfill space. Who says we're not a sustainable industry? It looks like Jim sees a manhole in front of him. He's gonna use the obstacle jump feature to pass over it without affecting his grade control settings. The obstacle jump feature allows the machine to jump over manholes and other ob obstacles at the push of a button and then resume the previous grade controls settings immediately after passing over the obstacle. As they prepare to taper out, they'll be using the standby feature, most often used during truck exchanges. The standby feature, again, is a one-button push control feature that allows us to stop the, stop the machine, sequentially shut down the water spray system, conveyor system, ventilation, and idle the engine down. Why push six buttons when you only have to push one? This takes all the guesswork out of manually raising and lowering the rotor and maintains accurate grade control. As experienced as he is, Bob is no match for the accuracy and smoothness of 3D grade control. Todd, it looks like the ditch digging boys have started setting up work on the nearby interchange. Where the ramp enters the freeway, there's new lighting that's going to be installed that requires some underground wiring. 
The PM825 is way too big for this job. So here we have the PM310 making a 39 inch utility cut. The 310 is using conventional 2D cat grade control. The horsepower to weight ratio is perfect on this machine. The weight balance effectively placed around the drum makes this thing a high producer. And if we're going to do a lot of full depth or trenching, there's a ballast kit that we can add to this thing that makes it an asphalt eating beast. Mm -hmm. The millings are going to be stockpiled on site to be used as shoulder backing. We'll then bring in a backhoe to excavate another two feet of soil while we add some pipe bedding and then we'll be ready for the electrical contractors. Our guys have run a lot of machines and they love how easy, this, how easy and comfortable this mill is to operate. And they love how maneuverable it is as well. They really spend a lot of time considering operator comfort and ease of use. And we all know a comfortable operator is generally a productive one. Most of the features Todd talked about on the big boy are all on the 310 as well. Controls across all mills are almost identical. This makes it easy, really easy for the guys to go from one machine to the next. Just over here, we have the Weiler P385B, very versatile paver. We don't see out on mainline very often, but it's a great machine to have for utility cut paving, parking lots, just about any commercial work, including city streets. This highway stuff is easy paving for our commercial crew, but try and put our commercial, our highway crew in a parking lot. Well, <laughs> maybe not, Dave. Again, the guys really love that paver, and the beauty of it is it's built with a lot of cat parts and sold and serviced through our cat dealer. Ask anyone who runs business and they'll tell you that uptime means everything. Ask a paving contractor what that means and it's just amplified a thousand percent with the perishable product that we deal in. It's great to know that behind the wider product we've got our great cat dealer supporting us as such. The 385 is a great paver. It's built like no other in its class and is rebuildable with a lot of similar replaceable wear components as the large pavers. So we know our investment's going to be around to get the job done and demand a high resale value when we're ready to upgrade. What the guys like most about the P385B is that it's engineered and built to pave a wide range of applications. A proven design with new innovative features providing performance, reliability, and outstanding mat quality. It looks like fallen, Todd. We've got a new combination roller. Why'd we decide on a combi in this case? Dave, I was talking to a good buddy of mine and he swears by that thing, so I thought we had to try it out. So what's the feedback? He was right, Dave. On commercial paving jobs, we get the nice tight surface we like to see in driveways and parking lots where appearance really does matter as much as density. The combi works great on these jobs because the steel drum seats the mix so the rubber tires can give us a nice tight surface texture and good density without picking up mix on the tires. On most of our commercial jobs, there isn't space or people to have a separate steel drum and rubber tire roller like when we're out on the highway. Plus, we can't get two rollers close enough without the tires picking up. A combination roller solves that problem. Hey, I see the big mill is far enough ahead. The boys are getting ready to start paving. Well, it looks like they're ready, Todd, but it doesn't seem as though they're moving yet. What's the story there? Well, it looks like they're waiting on a truck, which used to be a huge struggle for us, whether we were using our own trucks or whether we are hiring them out. Used to? Yeah, we've been running CAT's grade track job site tracking tool called eRoutes. If you look down there, you see Ron, our paving foreman, looking at his phone. Contrary to popular belief, he's not looking at Facebook. I told him eRoutes is an app, just like Facebook. Let's tell these people a little more about eRoutes. What he's looking at is what we have here on the screens. You see, he has an app on his mobile phone, and he's looking at all the trucks we have in the cycle right now. Ron knows how many trucks are on route from the plant, when the next one is expected to be on the job site, he can click on his app and easily see where the truck is on a map as well as look at the ticket to see how many tons it's bringing. It's a tool that's hard to put value on for him. It takes all the guesswork out of it. For now, Ron just wants to know how many minutes before the next truck arrives. I love it too. From this one app, I can look at all the jobs we have going and see what's coming from the plant, what's on the job, what's in the paver, and what's headed back to the plant. In addition, I can look at total tons. Again, you'll see an example of that on the screen. You see planned, delivered, on route, tons left to pave. eRoutes really helps us figure out yield, which, as you know, is time and money, and usually a sign of a problem if we're way off. Todd, that sounds amazing. Does it come up with the back office analysis as well? It sure does, Dave. 
It's really helped us analyze for areas of improvement on our jobs, and a byproduct has been when we share this information with our estimators, it's made us more accurate on our bids, which, as you know, has increased profit margin. A gift that keeps on giving, I say. Looking at this job, the truck should be here any minute now. Now that we have two inches milled off the surface, it's a little deeper in some areas and not less than two inches per job spec, our crossfall is a consistent 2% and a longitudinal profile was designed in 3D to give a superior IRI and smoothness bonus. Did I forget to tell you, Dave? We're tracking our investment in 3D milling technology to pay for itself using smoothness bonuses and savings in material quantities. We're allowed 10% overrun of materials and we expect our 3D designs will bring us within 5% of our bid estimate on mix quantity. On new construction, 3D can get us well under 1% on our mix quantities. Todd, it looks like the guys are set up to run 2D in this case. Why 2D with the paver? We've got the 3D technology. In fact, we paved that football stadium with it and the turf contractor said it was the smoothest surface they'd ever seen. Great question, Dave. At the end of the day, the principle of how the free-floating screed works has not changed since Barbara Green first commercialized the Model 79 in 1934. A paver still places the smoothest mat when it's free-floating without external forces or controls acting on it. We need to be smart about using the right technology for the right application. And that's where the paving specialist at our CAT dealer, our SciTech partners, provided guidance on where we should and shouldn't use some of these new technologies. It can get a little overwhelming. I'm glad I asked for some advice on which machine to invest my 3D dollars. The mill seemed the logical choice for us to start with first. These guys really are a partner in our success and sure do know their stuff. I was thinking the same as you, Dave, before I talked with SciTech and our local cap paving specialist. Todd, I see the Weiler material transfer vehicle out there. What's the call on that? To minimize paver stops and maximize smoothness bonus, we're using a Weiler E2850B self-propelled material transfer vehicle with a dump head that allows trucks to dump directly into the MTV. The large swing angle of the conveyor will work great when we get to the ramps and need to do offset paving over top of the Jersey barrier. We might scare a commercial crew running the 385B on the ramps, but at least they won't have to worry about how to get trucks in and out around those ramp areas. The remixing action of the 2850B greatly improves temperature uniformity and eliminates paver stops as long as we have a continuous flow of trucks to our job. Weiler's industry-leading innovations are designed to increase productivity while reducing operating costs and offering contractors optimal performance, reliability, and smoothness with a low cost of ownership. So Todd, I know we're not running 3D, but I see that there's a mast on the paver. What's going on there? Yes, Dave, it's not 3D this time. That's a high resolution thermal imaging camera capable of measuring temperature across the entire mat width up to 30 feet wide with high accuracy GPS. It measures and records surface temperature and paver stops in real time. It has no moving parts, so it's an extremely reliable tool. Some states, such as Minnesota, have thermal profiling specifications requiring uniform temperature across the full width of the mat. In preparation for this spec coming to our state, we decided to try Caterpillar's new thermal mapping technology on this job. The software analyzes the results and wirelessly sends a report to our field office or even to my phone. In addition, there's a display screed on the screed that shows operators a temperature map of the mat as we're paving. Many quality and efficiency improvements have on how we load trucks at the plant, the benefits of using an MTV like the 2850B, paver stops to auger speed have come about with the temperature mapping information available to us. For me, Dave, paver stops are the low-hanging fruit that I can immediately talk with my foreman and make improvements. It saved us a lot of time and money when we could actually measure how much waiting time we had. We had a night job on Highway 101 several years back that had a lot of bridges we had to pave under. We started tracking all those paver stops on a sheet of paper and a clipboard on the screen. It was a real pain in the butt, but when we tracked the data, the reasons why we were stopping and waiting, it had nothing to do with trucking. We were stopping at every bridge, waiting for the crew to paint lines for the paver to go under the bridge. We realized we could send one crew ahead of the paver, paint out the lines, and eliminate those paver stops. We saved hours of downtime that was purely related to having some data and better planning. It not only made us more efficient, but the quality of our mat improved by eliminating paver stops. When we combine this information with e-routes 
information on trucking, we can really see some areas for improving quality and efficiency that we didn't even know existed. I expect both technologies will become no-brainers for our company within a relatively short period of time. Behind the F and breakdown, we have the CB13 with VersaVibe. CAT's VersaVibe system gives us a great deal of flexibility when it comes to amplitude and frequency settings. It doesn't matter the lift thickness, we can easily dial it in to handle any job we have. I consider it a must-have on our rollers for that reason. It also has a 360 seat option. In this case, Brian doesn't have to be looking over his shoulder all day, he's always facing the direction of travel. As you can see, we also have a GPS antenna on the cab. The machine is equipped with CAT compaction control installed at the factory. Also available through our SciTech partner as an after sale installation. And we do that on a number of our older rollers. CAT compaction control provides us pass count mapping and temperature mapping. Information visible on the screen um, in a color coded fashion. Paint the screen green as we say. There's a density bonus on the table for this project. So we're using CAT compaction control to herp, help us earn the maximum bonus available on this job. This is a PWL specification where compact consistency of compaction is just as important as meeting the minimum percent density. Everyone knows what PWL stands for, don't they? Pain without limits. No, seriously, it's percent within limits. On PWL jobs, if we're not consistent, we won't get full bonus, no matter how good our density numbers are. CAT compaction control helps us meet PWL specs. It's funny, Todd, we implemented CAT compaction control technology on a job a while back where the DOT specified it. We didn't expect to get a ton of use after that. The very next project, our lead, operator, our lead roller operator, Patty, called me, screaming and hollering, where's her screen at? And she needed her screen back, so we ended up putting it back on the machine even though it wasn't specified. Yeah, Patty told us the pass count mapping not only helped her improve the uniformity of coverage, but actually resulted in her making fewer roller passes. Although Patty seldom had problems achieving density, she realized she often made more roller passes than necessary. This technology took some of the stress off her ability to keep up with the paver and still achieve the density numbers that the QC team was asking for. She won't do a job without it now. It's been a huge tool in training new operators and definitely accelerated the learning curve for the inexperienced ones. It seems to give us an advantage in, in recruiting as well. I guess probably that gamification aspect for the Nintendo generation. Following the CB13 is the CW16 pneumatic tire roller. This nine wheel bathtub on wheels does a great job kneading and compacting the mix. Sometimes we use it in the breakdown position directly behind the paver, but today we're using it as the intermediate roller. You're right, Todd. Having a rubber tire roller following the paving train, I get better sleep at, not, not, at night not worrying about compaction as much. We have an 11 wheel option for the CW16 as well that gives us wider coverage. And the way CAT has these things set up with modular weight options, we can easily set them up for any job we have. The CW34 is what we would normally use on a job like this, but the boss told me it was needed for display at a trade show today. The air on the run feature on the CW34 makes it really easy for us to get the right tire pressure to maximize the compactive effort for that job. All right, Todd, so check this out. I was talking to Bill over at the CAT dealer a while back, and he mentioned that the CAT engineers had some new technology that they're working on on soil compactors, and they were looking for somebody to put some field hours on it for them. After talking to him, I felt like it was a good fit. So you know that section up around 238, 238 and a half? Yeah, the section that failed completely and needed full depth reclamation? Yes, sir. Yeah, my guys were there earlier with the RM500B and already completed this rebuild to a depth of 10 inches and accurately metered in 5 hundredths of a gallon per cubic yard of stabilizing emulsion. However, this area still needs more compaction to meet the 95% proctor density before we can pave over it. The CS56B out there is getting ready to compact it now. That's right, Todd. That's our test unit from CAT. It's equipped with what they call command for compaction. All right, you got me, Dave. What's command for compaction? Todd, so to finish up this demo here, that's Dave in, our, uh, in, the, in that machine there. So you put the new guy in the cab of the roller on his second day of the job on one of the most critical se sections of the job? Are you nuts, Dave? No, you losing it? <laughs> Todd, check this out. We showed Dave how to set this system up, which was really just turn it on, roll around the perimeter of the area that he needs to be compacted, and after that, he inputs a few details like number of passes, speed, drum overlap, and then he hits the go button. Todd, you ready for this? At that point, Dave's just along for the ride. 
the machine has taken over and is doing the rolling pattern with the required number of passes, speed, overlap, giving you near 100% coverage. When it's done, the roller just comes to a stop. Come on, Dave, you're telling me this roller is literally driving itself? I am, Todd, right before your very eyes. Check out the video from the first day we put Dave in the cab of this machine. When this is released to production, which I'm told is not in the too distant future, this will be a game changer for us. It will all but eliminate operator skill gaps. And you know how hard it is for us to come by qualified operators nowadays. Think about it. Just yesterday, looking in Vision Link, Dave's pattern was about a 55% coverage. Todd, we can't do anything at 55% coverage and make money. Today, with command for compaction, he's virtually at 100%. The right number of passes, the correct vibe setting, speed, perfect overlap every time. The only difference, command for compaction. That's one way, heck of a way to end a demo, Dave, a self-driving machine. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed the demo. Just remember, here at Cat Paving, we're right here with you.